Hey everybody, it's The Trout. You just got through hearing the best band that replicates Beatle music note for note. They're called the Analogs and they're out of the Netherlands. Everybody knows who John, Paul, George, and Ringo are, but they don't know who Dietrich, Felix, Bart, Fred, and Jack are. But if you go listen to this band live, believe me, you will remember every moment of their presentation of the Beatles music. They're obsessed with sounding exactly like the albums, and they pull it off extraordinarily well. They've even gone out and spent time and effort of trying to find the same instruments, the same amplifiers, the same everything the Beatles did back in the 60s. They are obsessed, as I said, but you know what? As a fan of this band, and believe me, I love this band. I love every moment I got to hear them. And I was lucky to be able to interview two of these great band members, Dieterich and Felix, who spent some time with me talking about the analogs. And if you're a Beatles fan, you want to make sure you watch every YouTube video of these guys. And hopefully one day they'll come over here to the United States and we can enjoy them over here because they sell out every concert they do in the Europe and the UK. So stay tuned for this great episode of the analogs. But before I get started, please take a moment to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you like it. it. Helps us keep our channel going and we got some great interviews coming up in the future. So stay tuned for the analogs, the best Beatles, well, not a tribute band, exact presentation that I've ever heard. That's next on KT in the Drought. How many is actually in the band? I, I try to count them. It, it varies from night to night, or do you have a standard band that goes with everybody? Because you got all the horn players and the, the yeah. other people. That... The standard band is five people, and then we have one uh, percussion player, yeah. percussionist. Okay. Then we have four strings and four horns. Yep. So that's about 14 people on stage tops. That's yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, it is, but it's a good fun, and I mean, uh, it's, it really brings life into the the whole uh, late Beatle thing. You know, if if you need those those people to really, to really bring it, you know, get it across to the audience. I think. You know, and and are most of the places you perform are they about the same size, two three thousand people. I was trying to figure that out. Um, or do you do? You know? Yeah, in general, that that's what it would be in general. There are some places we will play which will be a lot bigger. Okay. We have some big show, obviously in Holland. Uh, we have some big shows coming up in September, and they're like uh, fifteen thousand a night. Oh well, wow. so that's that's, but that's, that's like, a bigger, much bigger, bigger crowd. Yeah, that's really, really big. So okay, we hope, hopefully, eventually, we will get to that going through <laughs> Europe. But obviously, we have to start start small. Well, <laughs> you know, as I uh, being a Beatles fan, a list of that. The first time I heard you, I was just as I'm sure a lot of people are. I'm just totally amazed at the effort and work that must go into making this production the way it is. In other words, so perfect because you're not performing in front of people that don't know the songs. They know every freaking note, every sound. <laughs> yeah, ad nauseum. <laughs> they know it. So you can't really screw up because they know it. People expect exactly on, 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 on the certain second, something, you know, something on the record is like a, a small sound, well, you know how it is. Yeah. And they expect to hear that that particular sound there and then, so yeah. And if it's not there, they're gonna know it. And, yeah, yeah, and, definitely. Yeah. You know, and, and so before you guys got into this, I know Diedrich, you had your own, you had your solo projects, didn't you do some things? And, yeah. and Felix, aren't you doing some things and, and your yeah, own? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, you know, in Holland, and basically it's probably the same as in the States, it's very hard to make a living off your own music. Uh, uh, Felix did quite successfully for a while, uh, some 10, 15 years ago with yeah. Moke. Uh, we, there was a huge band in Holland and they had some platinum records as well and some, you know, some really big festival gigs. Right. Uh, I never got to that point with my solo work, but um, um, so in the end, basically, um, it's very re rewarding to play this because everybody knows this music and it's basically the best music ever made as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. So I don't really mind to, to play the same show every night well, it's, it's, and it's always for for a period of time and of course the beatles have so much material yeah yeah well but you know the thing about it is you, you and it is true and i talk to musicians all over the world everybody has the same problem the music business has completely changed 
you know, yeah. and I, and I noticed that you guys over there still sell CDs. They don't do that over here. People, I know you, I, I, I've looked at both your information and people are still selling CDs. I mean, you're bringing an album out. I just saw that obviously they were pressing that the yeah. other day. I saw that on YouTube and I guess vinyl is coming back. I, I don't know. Yeah. There seems to be some people want vinyl and, and the thing about it is you, you can't make any money doing it. That's why everybody tours. And I, and I try to tell people, you know, I got music out on Spotify and so does everybody else. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's the problem because a lot of it's not very good. And so in your situation where you, you do this and now you're touring, which is where all the money is. Anyway, the, the fact is that's just the way it is. Yep. And, and it's not, I don't think it's going to change. I, I don't think it's going to change at all. So no. no, physical sales are not coming back. Period. No, I mean, no chance. And, and, and it was bad. At, well, and the other thing about it, it was bad enough working with the record labels as it was. And, and yeah. now it's like, you know, so. So but, who is the most when this who was the guy that said, let's just put this together and I'm going to be have upset, you know, OCD about doing this Beatle thing. Who was the one that came up with the original idea to, or, to do the analogs? That was that was Fred. That was Fred's dream, really. You know, Fred used to, used to be a musician when he was younger. OK. Uh, uh, in the 70s and stuff before he got a real job <laughs> um, but he never when he got a real job and was really really successful at that he never lost the dream of actually playing in a band again mm -hmm. and so he released a, a solo album uh and at the course of releasing that album he got in contact with a uh, bard bard from popo uh because bard wrote a song from for the for the album and so they became actually a quite good friends and then I think they had had maybe one or two beers too many. And Fred mentioned the fact that, you know, he would love to play the Beatles stuff, whatever. And Bart <laughs> sort of like fell around laughing. Said, You're crazy. You know, another, another Beatles cover band. Come on. Yeah. Man. yeah. Then when they thought about it, Bart said, well, if you're really serious, there's only one way to do it. And that's to do it really note for note, really get into the stuff and do the stuff that virtually no one else does. Don't wear the suits. Don't do the, the, yeah. the way. I've seen enough of those in my life. Yeah. Yeah, so so that's when they sort of went, okay, let let's go for it, and then they started this long journey of, okay, how are we going to do it, and who's going to play it? You know, that's uh, that's basically the long story, quite short. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It. Well, so so what did Bart do? Was he a musician? Or was he a, a yeah? Trial? So he was. He's always been a musician. But he, would, I don't think he played bass all the time. That wasn't his main instrument, or was it always? No, that was his, that was his main instrument. Oh, really? He, okay. He, he is a bass player, although he really likes Hammond. Uh, organ as well he's, yeah. he's done a lot of session stuff on the, on the hammond uh, and he's a pretty good songwriter he's had some hits here yes. in holland oh wow so uh yeah he he does quite quite a lot actually so and everyone in the band is basically has been a musician basically that's well, all you had you guys done. are too good to be just you guys are all good i mean uh, but you know, as you know yourself there are so many good musicians i mean i could probably off the top of my head ring five better musicians than the ones they're staying here tonight but i mean as you know with good musicians it's that's one thing but the next thing is people have to really get on and if you yeah. get on oh that's, yeah that's good lord thing. that's I mean, oh yeah the beatles were dynamite together but individually they were all really quite different so it's they had the magic that sort of worked with the four of them together but i mean individually if you took them on their own maybe paul is probably the only one that's really really stand out as a musician yeah, I'm not trying to diss uh, Lennon. No, no, no. But no. He's, his the way he would approach something would be completely different from the way Paul would approach it. So that's 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 my take on things. You know? Well, and, you know, I I look at it because you know McCartney's over here now touring, mm -hmm. and yeah. uh, the tickets sell <laughs> seven eight hundred dollars a piece. Crazy. It's like people crazy. people are paying it. They're, you yeah. know what they're doing? They're buying memories. That's exactly yeah, what it is. Yeah. Buying memories. And right. I guess in case it's what you guys are doing too, but it's it's different for me because when I watched the White album and I watched the whole YouTube video, all I, I, all I could say was, you guys know how good you are. I, and I don't need to tell you that. But here's the other thing is the interaction that has to go on to get these equipment on and off and things going. So, I mean, it's just amazing to me. It's just I, I watched it and I go, here comes the piano, here comes this, you're going to switch yeah. guitars. And and at the very beginning when you did, back in the USSR, I thought, okay, how are they going to that Dear Prudence without doing anything? And then I watched you, Dieter, playing Dear Prudence. And then I realized, okay, he's backed off 
and they turn, turn, he's got the thing turned up and then you start playing that little riff at the beginning. And I went, ah, that's how they do it. But to bring all those people, those, the roadies coming in and out, that's a lot of work. Yeah. And to do that, I'm not telling you anything to do. I mean, you guys are up there performing, but these people, they have to do it perfectly every night. Yeah. And seamlessly. Yeah. They're pros. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's, that's what makes it that's what makes the production so expensive that's why it's quite difficult to, you know to move we we kind oh, yeah. of go all right yeah tomorrow we're playing there and there with things have to be thought out okay can we really do that is it possible to do the show that we do yeah, doing it, it that way enough. so it's that makes it difficult at, at some forms you know well and you know as a musician i think the hardest thing and i would the, the reason i ask you about the size of the auditoriums that place like, every place is different I mean, they all sound a little different and that's what's hard. I mean, it is hard to, and I mean, even though as good as you guys are, the sound on stage always sounds a little different every night. Yep. And that makes it a little more difficult. And people don't understand that. I tell people all the time, if they go and hear the band, it never doesn't sound like anything like that on the stage. It sounds completely different. It's supposed to sound perfectly out front. <laughs> and and, and you guys, true. Are, it's true. Yeah, we 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 did uh, we did a tour through Germany uh, a couple of weeks ago, and there was really quite different. We had some like sports arenas that were kind of reduced to half size, mm -hmm. and we played those, and the sound was totally different from, for instance, Circus Krone, which is in Munich, where the Beatles played as well, and some theaters. I mean, the theaters are perfect for for this kind of thing, but when you as soon as you get to like a big auditorium kind of thing, where uh, when then the sound starts traveling in a in a, yeah. in, a in a way, so it, you know oh, yeah. you have to adjust every night. Which is doable, but um, you notice the differences. Yeah, it's a lot of work for the crew, and especially for the for the sound man. You know, he's really on top of the job. So that's, to uh, EQ everything out and make sure it sounds. Yeah, yeah. I think to be honest, I think to be honest, he's the one. You know, he does the magic. Really, we we play the notes, but mm. he's the one that really makes it sound like the what you want to hear. Yeah. Well, yeah, he does a great job. I mean, obviously, because every place is a little different. People don't understand that, but. The other thing I always wondered about it, the the obsession I call it obsession with the, mm. the instruments that you have, you're playing some yep. Epiphones from the '60s and things like that and the other stuff, and are you guys playing um, the Voxes, or are you playing some Fenders? What do you guys use most of the time when you're playing electrics? Uh, you, you know, lots of different stuff. Know. Well, yeah. uh, we have on on our side of the stage because we are we're together. Right. Uh, Dietrich uses uh, Fender Twin. Okay, that's why I was these are all twins. Uh, before uh, it's a master master volume twin, so there's no no pre. So it's you know. It's oh, like, it's just oh okay, I got you. It's uh, they would I think they're from the they're from the sixties. I have a a 1964 Bandmaster. Ah, uh, which I'm using. Uh, uh, Bart is on a a Bassman and a Vox AC hundred. Okay, he's got he can switch between amps between a Vox amp and a and a, and a Fender amp. And Jack has a, he has a, a twin as well, same as Edrix, same type. And he also has an AC50. Ah. And the, yeah, everything from the, from the 60s. So, so do you have all, any, is there anything new? Is there anything new? Well, the guys on this, well, what we don't do is, well, Jack does it, but we don't, we don't do any tap dancing with pushing pedals and stuff. We ah. have on the side of the stage because obviously with some guitar oh, parts, yeah. you have like a distorted guitar that will go into a Leslie guitar that will go back into uh i don't know something phased or whatever right. so yeah. and we're concentrating on singing or whatever so i don't have to do any of that i've got someone on the side who's tapping all the tapping yeah. and stuff and we just have to play the notes <laughs> play the but, notes and, you know yeah. but that's kind of cool i'm not a real big pedal guy i don't like having a lot of pedals no. and mm -hmm. it we went through that phase and now people see and they get so many pedals on the and custom design and all that stuff yeah. but, but you guys you know the sound has to be a certain way yeah, yeah, well, yeah. The, well, the I basis mean, is basically the guitar just going straight into the amp. You know, that's well. That's the sound. well is any does know. anything go direct? Does your acoustics go direct, or does everything go through an amp? Acoustic goes. Acoustic goes direct. Direct. Does it? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. And and to be honest, my my guitar without going through. Obviously, there's a couple of pedals that I would use. I don't use a Leslie pedal because I use. We have a couple of you real. Have, you have a Leslie. Yeah, I saw yeah. Leslie and stuff. Uh, but I most of it. I would say for ninety percent. Of the show, my guitar is basically just my guitar going straight into the bandmaster. No, nothing uh, else. If I want okay. more drive, I just hit my guitar harder. That's, okay, yeah, that's it. That's the way it's set up. Did yeah. did did it get down to the fact that you guys figured out what kind of strings they were using? The Beatles. Did it get that? 
Did it get that crazy? Well, I'm just no, wondering. No, I just want no, no, not that crazy. No. <laughs> I believe that you know the, the Paul had those vinyls, yeah, vinyl, the, vinyl the black strings, ones, the black yeah, ones. Ones. I would have preferred to 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 have used those. But, yeah, um, because then you get with the compression, you'll get the little. Yeah, doo, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what I would say. But I don't think that Bart wants no, them. No. Want <laughs> but it would it would look so much better with black strings because then. Oh like, yeah, it would. Yeah, but, that's Paul. Yeah. Yeah, but it would sound much better as well. It sounds better, yeah. Yeah. And and as for the guitars, the most most of them are vintage, but I mean uh, the the um, the Les Paul Gold Top, which is supposed to be from. 57 or something. Oh, yeah, one of the old ones. It's a custom shop. Yeah, it's a custom shop. Some stuff is so expensive. Yeah, yeah $250,000 or something. Oh, yeah. 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 We, we do have the we do have an original original Rosewood Telecaster. It's at nineteen seventy. Yeah. Oh, wow. That was really, really expensive, but that's like a real, that sounds awesome. Yes, yeah, it's a really, really mean sounding guitar when it goes straight into the amp. You know, it's funny. I interviewed a guy a couple of weeks ago from England. He just, he, was a professor for years and he lost his job during COVID. So he always wanted to build guitars. His number yeah. one design is a telly. Oh yeah. That's people want tellies. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm a Les Paul guy. That's what I've always played. I've always played Les Paul stuff because I like sustain. And he said, that's the number one. I go, but they're just very simple. Very I mean, simple it's just fun. a slab of wood and put a couple of, I mean, you know, and yeah. it's not like, like anything else. It's very simple. Yeah. So at what song, I'm just curious, cause I have to think about it. Which songs have the Leslie on it? Uh, Golden Slumbers. Oh, it yeah. does? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a Leslie at the, at the end. Uh, you Never Gave Me Your Money has a Leslie on one of the It does? Oh, that, yeah. that's, that's what he has it run out for the Leslie? Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. There's a Leslie on uh, Octopus Garden. Uh, yeah, Octopus Garden. There's a Leslie on uh, Sun King. Sun King, yeah. The, 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 that, yeah, I remember. The, the, the okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's quite a lot, so quite a lot of Leslie yeah. on Avenue. Uh, here Comes the Sun. Yeah. Also, listen. That's actually quite know, awesome when you think about. I, I didn't realize that they were so important because the one that really got me going or heard about Leslie's was Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix played through a Leslie a lot. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I had no idea that the Beatles played that much to the Leslie. I mean, quite a lot in that time. And they and, would do it for like two or three notes, and then and then just change the guitar. It goes straight, and it's just on, and it's off, and it's it, it's crazy. Sometimes you're listening stuff. Wait a minute, what's going on there? It's well, just put it on and. It, and yeah. throw it in and take it out and take it out again. So has any of them got in touch with you and said, what a great job you guys are doing as McCartney mm -hmm. or and his people and, they, and oh, none no. of them, oh, no, none no. of them, really? No, no, no chance. We heard that there was one kind of uh, uh, email conversation with a kind of a mutual contact. And uh, he uh, kind of sent some stuff that we did to Paul. And he, yeah, he sort of said like uh, great stuff. You yeah, know, I can hear him say that. Right? No, but what he actually said was, we played in front of the old palace. There's a palace, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah, Queen's sure. Palace in, in Holland. It's called okay. Spy, but it were, well, now the Queen, well, he's not the, she's not the Queen anymore. Uh, her mother used, used to live at, at the, at the palace. palace. We played in front of that. It's beautiful. And in, in the garden. And uh, I think the guy, I can't remember his name, the, the Liverpoolian guy. Yeah, Liverpoolian guy. Yeah. Uh, he sent them a photograph and stuff and emailed with mm -hmm. the only, and Paul sent back, oh, that's a really nice house. That was a dancer. <laughs> <laughs> that's a really nice house. Oh, that's what he said. No, no, no. I was like, that's a really nice house. <laughs> that, that, now that's funny. Hey, I mean, yeah, come on. Yeah. Come on, guys. Come on. You think they would at least say, you know, what do they say? Uh, you know, imitation is a serious form of flat, flattery. I mean, come on. They, they've had it. I mean, yeah, I can understand that they've had it for so long. So many people playing this stuff. I mean, when I was a little younger, I loved the bootleg Beatles. As yeah, well, I too. thought they were fantastic. So, I mean, and I, they, I mean, George even had those guys playing at his birthday party. So, I mean, I think they've, I <laughs> think they've had enough of all the, yeah. the Beatles cover bands and stuff, which I understand. And, and apparently Ringo has been here a couple of times to a festival. And we know some people who organize the festival and they were oh, like, yeah. maybe you should meet Ringo, whatever. And so they were saying, yeah, well, like, well, if you can arrange it, we'd love to meet Ringo. Oh, sure. Ringo was like, no, I don't want to know anything Beatles. I don't want to know. Mm. That, that's the way. But they're just sick of it. Up. They just yeah. like the, they just like the checks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, they don't seem to have that. They don't have any problems with that. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 certainly not. No. Well, you guys, you not. guys are, you know, I just wonder. I know a lot of crowd probably is an older crowd, but do you see young people coming too? Do you have a? a do you, yeah. Because then I, you're I'm, introducing something they've never heard. Maybe they, they know, but they don't well, really you'd be know. Surprised. The kids really know the stuff, especially when we were in Germany. The, yeah, the Germany. average age of the the audience went down by you know by like 20, 25 percent. Oh, wow. and a lot of young kids they they were singing everything it surprised me i mean even with my own my own band like years ago 20 years ago 
when I was playing my own band and I thought I'll do a cover, I did a across the universe. I thought, you know, I'll just throw something oh, in. Cool tune. And yeah. Like kids who were in, they were like 16, 17, 17 years old. I thought no one's going to know it. They all sang along word for word. It was like, my God, they, so they know their stuff, you know? What's, yeah. what's the biggest one they sing along with that they, um, Hey Jude, I would assume is one that they all probably go jump in on. Yeah. That. All you need is love. That kind of stuff. Oh, that one, all, yeah. The whole okay. setup of the show is like, especially with this show is uh, when we do every road, we actually do it the way it is on the album. So when one song finishes, the next song comes along really, really quick. So we don't really allow space for people to really let go. So oh, okay. sort of like holding their breath for the, for when we come back uh, on the second half of the show, we play like a sort of like a little greatest hits, sort of greatest hits thing. And so you're, com odd. you're combining Let It Be and Abbey Road. Is that what you're doing right now? Yeah, some yeah. stuff. Yeah, so so we're doing Abbey Road before the break and then after break, we're gonna, we're gonna, we have, we're having a, like a, a wandering through all the records from, from Revolver, Revolver to- Revolver, Pepper. Oh, okay, that's cool. So we're kind of doing the best of with, with, with a couple of songs from Let It Be as well. But we don't yeah. do that as an album in, in its entirety. It's not that great an album as <laughs> that's what they it's always say. It's hard to build a show around. We well, that, that, to be honest, that's what we all thought. But we we did rehearse the whole album. We we played all, all the funny, stupid yeah. bits. We did all of those, and it was actually quite funny to play because it's actually quite short. So before you know it, you played all the songs, and then you start to enjoy some stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's actually quite good. It's, it's nice. actually quite funny. No. Well, I, you know, of course, I knew the chronological part of that whole thing because a lot of people think that was the last album and blah 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 and all that stuff. But yeah. but when I was when I was in I hate to say this high school is when Abbey Road came out. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and I bought the album and I had headphones on and listened to it all the time, yeah. trying to find. I was actually trying to find mistakes. I really was okay. Oh, they're gonna. Oh, there's a harmony mistake here. There's something. No, there's nothing. I'm going. You know, I listen over and over again and go, and and so it was my. That was my favorite. A lot of people, you know, a little bit younger, older than me, they want Sergeant Peppers. You could tell. That's what the, the old joke was. Which your yeah. I can tell your age by asking what's your favorite Beatle album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, and our Beatle albums change. Our favorite yeah, changes quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, I was never really like a huge fan of the White Album. I liked some stuff, but now that I played all album, all, yeah, it, it may be become one of my favorite Beatles album because it's so diverse. You 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 know, you start to love all these little songs. You know? It is very, and you know, it wasn't until you guys played it again. I watched the whole concert that I went. I forgot all those different songs were on there because I was kind of mm. like you. Felix, I didn't think it was, you know, kind of like, you know, back in US, my band used to play yeah, back in like US. You like all the, the, the ones you're going to, you know, you're going to like. Yeah. Oh, that one's good. That's good. Whatever. But and then, then when you got, the other ones in between. doesn't, and then doesn't Fred come down and sing? He's, uh, which one? Honey Pie. One? <laughs> Honey Pie. Honey, Honey Pie. Pie. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, you got Piggies and all that stuff. And I'm going, oh my gosh, yeah. I forgot all those songs. Yeah, Piggies, that's great. Yeah. That's great. And, and, as, and it, as an album, then it's really is a good collection of songs when you play it all together. I mean, yeah. you wouldn't, probably wouldn't put piggies anywhere in a, in a, like a mixed up thing, but in the course of the album, it's, it really fits in. So the white album was quite a special one because uh, obviously because it was a double album. So we built a show around the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and your blackbird, my friend is phenomenal. I mean, thank you, my friend. I, I know I, I, that was one of the first thing you had said you'd learn how to play, but mm. uh, that, that song is just, you do such a wonderful job on it. I mean, you you, you guys both do a good job. The, the whole band does anything. I, I don't want you know to blow smoke up you, but the thing is, you guys are really good, and I want more people to hear you about you over here because it's amazing yeah. when people I talk to and I go, these guys are really good, and there are some people that don't care about the Beatles. You know, do you yeah. like the Beatles? Ah, oh, they were okay, and I'm going like, well, yeah, but they kind of you don't if you didn't live during that time. Every time, if they wanted to change the music flow, they just did something different and everybody changed that music. Everybody did, yeah. You yeah. don't have that anymore. No. I mean, There's you know, when they went from the clear, you know, short haircut, which would everybody say, oh my God, look how long their hair is, to doing the Sergeant Peppers thing. Everybody wanted to do that. The Stones did it. Then they all just started doing it. And it all changed the whole thing. And you don't have that anymore. You know, now it's whatever. Yeah, popular and, culture is so, so how do you call it, scattered around or something? Oh, yeah. I mean, so divided, yeah. you know, you don't have one major group or artist anymore that kind of influences a whole generation of... No, of, you of don't. Music. And so as you guys go along this this this, tri this trip, so to speak, so to speak, 
How long are you going to do it? Do you have any idea? You just think you're going to keep doing it as long as you can? We've got time. Well, we still have time. We have time on our side. Yeah. I think I, do, I, I always ask myself when I wake up in 10 years time, which, who's, who's going to die first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I mean, if, as long as you're having fun. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I do believe that one of the things is writing your own music and people singing to it is one of the coolest things that can exist if you get that mm. opportunity, opportunity. But if you're having fun, what else is there? And let me tell you, talking to people all over the world in bands, everybody has the same problem. Well, I was in a band, but so and so, we didn't like him. And I mean, I've been in so many and I can tell stories, just people breaking up because, oh, I didn't want to play that song and your band is gone. Yeah. So you, you all, are, that's what you said at the beginning was, you all get along. Yeah. yeah that's you know? a good thing. And, and so do you guys travel together too, or do you go yeah, on different buses? But oh, wow. You really do get along. Point, I think a really good point is because we've all played a band and you know, you know what it's like. You have your yes. set list and you're playing, yeah. you're going, yeah, it's going really good. And say, yeah, this is great. And then you look down and think, oh no, not that song. Oh. <laughs> but with the Beatles, it's like, you don't really have a point where you think, oh, this is a really shit song. I don't want to play. Yeah. We, don't, we don't really have that. No, you so, don't. It's always good fun. So I think that keeps things going. Yeah, and yeah. I think that that's why you can keep going. That's why you can keep going. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, you think about it. If you think about how long they've been around, 60 plus years, 60 years. Yeah. And, and they're still selling records. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, yeah. it, it's, it's amazing. And I don't think anybody, I go back and even go to back when the in, in the World War II era with Glenn Miller. I'm sure Glenn Miller had no idea people would be playing his music 80 years later. No, I, I, you know that. Yeah. And, yeah it is, and, with the Beatles, you have, I mean, it's, it's, it's worldwide. It's a global thing and it's, uh, it's an eternal thing. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't fade away. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's everlasting. So there's basically no limit to where you can go and, and how, how long you can do it. I mean, there's new generations uh, coming in all the, you know, every new generation is, is, is hanging, you know, uh, uh, clinging on to the Beatles yeah. as well. So I don't see an end to this basically. <laughs> Well, that's good for you guys. Yes, yeah. it is. <laughs> now, I mean, America is still to conquer. So, um, yeah. but, um, well, you so know, have you ever guys seen that band out of uh, Russia that plays this Chicago music? I don't know if you ever heard of them before. I, I'm trying to remember what they are, but they do covers to Chicago. Right. And they're oh, yeah, phenomenal. I've seen them. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. They're over here now. So, oh, yeah. I don't know, not here in Dallas, but they're here in the United oh, States because I mean, they were doing it. They're, they're probably glad they're out of Russia <laughs> at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> they may not be going back as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was yeah. them. I wouldn't go it's back. So, you know, I, I don't want to keep you guys because I just I, I do love what you guys do. I think you're just great, phenomenal musicians. And um, I, I appreciate you taking time to talk to me because I do like to I love talking to other musicians. That that, yeah. that to me is fun because we all have the same issues. We all have the same problems, but we all have the same camaraderie. Yep. And, and I know from my own personal experience how much work goes into this production you do. And I don't care if you play it 3,000 times, you still have to rehearse it and make sure it's right yep. all the time. True. And I, I have to ask, which one of you decided to be Paul and who, who decided to be John? We don't really. <laughs> no, we, 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 it's, not, it's never really been that determined. It's the book. Obviously, uh, Dirk is a lot, does a lot more of the Paul stuff. I didn't do any Paul stuff except for one little bit. That's and, true. And, and this is my I McCartney, my my McCartney moment. Yeah. Song, what song, so which song do you do by him? Uh, McCartney yeah. moment. My McCartney moment is in uh, You Never Give Me Your Money. Yeah, out of little, college money. Oh. Out of college money. That's my McCartney moment in the show. Yeah. <laughs> so how I, long? how long is the show when you guys perform? How long is the total? Like two, two fifteen or something. Yeah, two fifteen. So you have a break. You have a uh, intermission. Yeah, we have a, a twenty break. minute break. Yeah, yeah. Both we'll we'll play both sets. So definitely like a uh, an hour each set. Then we have an encore, which is maybe like uh, twelve fifteen minutes. Yeah. So have you ever not had an encore? Have anybody? Oh, has wow. any? Have you never no. played and people didn't say we want more? No. I mean, come on, come on, no. you guys. It's never no. happened. No. I mean, think about think about your personal careers. The oh, difference. Yeah. I mean, think about that. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of concerts for me personally that I didn't have to do an encore. <laughs> I didn't request for it. Yeah. Like, you know, we, we really have to, to be grateful to the Beatles in, in that respect. I mean, oh, yeah. obviously we, we do a, we do a, more, a half decent job on it, but I mean, it's still, it's the songs, it's the material that, that is the magic really. 
and you can seriously fuck it up but i mean if you do it uh, with with a lot of conscience yeah then then you're in a pretty safe yeah zone. we get we get close obviously we we don't have the voices but we musically we get very very close yeah, i think wise. the first time I played it it's like i and i said it one time before but i think it sums up it's like you're standing in the record that's actually what it feels like when you're on the stage and it just starts it's like i know this i've known this all my life it's like crazy well and what's that line i was reading on the on the i was reading a website last night about if you want to go hear a beetle go see paul but if you want how, how did that what was that line it was in actually yeah, if you want website. to see a beetle go see paul if you want to hear the beetles go go to the analogs yeah, that's yeah there you go very very true yeah, yeah. And, and and that is 100 true and 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 so you guys are on tour for how long now i know you're going to the uk yeah. Yeah, well, have we you have booked out all we... summer. I assume you're booked out all summer. I would imagine. No, no we, have, we have a summer a break. Summer break. We have a summer break because we don't it. we don't do festivals because the production is so it's crazy. Yeah, not okay. yet. Not not yet. It we obviously we want to do festivals, but at the minute this production is just not, not going to happen. So I think we finish halfway through June. Yeah, and we're like two months off, and then we're pick it up we're, in September. We're back on again. So where do you all, all live? Time. Where do you guys live at? Amsterdam region. Yeah, we all live in Amsterdam. Hey, they all do, and family. You're married, kids, any of that stuff? Going yeah, on? yeah. Well, I'm not married, but my girlfriend and I have two kids. Yeah, well, everyone has everyone yeah. has kids, and everyone been married, got divorced. The uh, usual. Uh, that's the regular. Same that, with everybody we, else. That's, that's <laughs> okay. We've all been through that. Don't worry about that. Yes. <laughs> so you don't get to. Does your families ever go with you? They travel with you guys. I mean, it's not that far for you guys to go, but it, no, they it's ever not go. That far, but I mean, they get fed up. Look, they like, get tired of it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. I want. They've seen it. You know, it's like, do you want to come again tomorrow? No, it's okay. I think there's maybe something else on TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know. I trust you. I understand. Yeah. My wife would go, are you guys coming to the gig tonight? Uh, why? <laughs> I've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. I've it seen it true. like 40 times. So it's yeah, like, I don't no, need to no. see it again. But that's are you going to play a different lead part than you did before? No. Maybe. <laughs> but not, maybe. Maybe I might play something notes, but you'll never know anyway. No, so but, uh, you never notice. Yeah. yeah. So then you get Maybe. a break in the summer, and then you probably kick kick back off in the fall again. I guess that's what yeah, you probably September, do. September, it's going to yeah, start September. all over again. Then we have like the really big shows in all uh, the Zico. That's like fifteen thousand a night, and then from there we oh, go on to a French tour. We have ten dates in France, then we go to England, and then we're back into Belgium and stuff. And then, and then we start working on the. I think we have a tour with. We recorded an album ourselves, so then we're going to be playing some shows for that. So that's the good, the good foot thing that you guys do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now that that's all fin it's ready to go, isn't it? It's just you know, yeah, that's all done. The whole the whole album's done, ready to go. Now, who did all, who did all the songs on that? Did you all collaborate on we, that? We, yeah, we all wrote. Uh, everybody on the band wrote. wrote that's cool. That. So you had to force yourself to write like a Beatle. Well, that, that didn't I mean, take I mean, a lot yeah, of <laughs> But you understand what I'm saying. It's probably, it yeah, has, yeah. I, I listen to part of Obviously, they got the only thing you guys are doing right now is a little good fit promo, but I assume it has that same kind of feel to it. Yeah. No? Or it we've does? All, yeah, we've all had our, uh, you know, our share of 60s sounding things, you know, the, the you know, the Kinks, the Beatles, the Move, the, the Who, yeah. the whatever. Yeah. So basically, we, we can't get away from, from that, luckily. Yeah, that's what we love. So, I mean, well, not only that, your harmonies are so good. I mean, Thanks. that's that's why the Beatles were so good. I mean, the harmonies and yeah. and and I love bands that have harmony because I I was always the guy that sang in the middle. I could never oh, really yeah. harmonize very well. Yeah. Right. I yeah. was the guy. You just have Rick. You do regular notes. We'll all sing around <laughs> you. Everybody will do some fancy stuff. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll do that part. You know, yeah. I did my thing when I did lead guitar. Okay, you're going to stand out front and do lead guitar. Okay, that's fine. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm from Texas, so I grew up playing you know Texas stuff. Guys, I, I want to end this. Thank, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I really do. It's nice meeting both of you. Um, keep up yeah. the great work, guys. Uh, just keep plowing through it because I just think you do a great job. And more more people know need to hear about you over here. They really do. And That'd be cool. Don't don't wear don't buy any, don't buy any suits. Just wear what you're wearing. Yeah, don't yeah. Buy the <laughs> We wouldn't fit into the suits anyway. Nothing Although the Felix's hair well, is we, getting close well, we, to the beetle, but you know, he's, yeah, he's close. He's I still got hair. It's funny they, they all talk about. Yeah, we don't do wigs, and they think, wait a minute, have a look in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well guys, I'm going to hang up here. You guys right. have a great, great evening. Have a great show tonight. All right. Thanks, Thanks very much. Take care. Appreciate you. See you. Bye. 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 Let me whisper in your ear Well, I got
got something to say that I think you'd want to hear. Well, it's easy and sure is good advice. And it don't cost a thing, no, ain't that a damn good price? Get on the good foot. Complications can make you lose control. You're gonna need some stress relief, but you got it for your soul. And it don't matter if you're young or if you're old. This recipe's fully cooked, at least that's what I've been told. Get on the good foot. Good foot picks you up out of a mess, relieves the pressure from your chest, a new sensation. I've never felt this good, but I'll be damned if I know why.